Joseph Stalin, the leader of the Soviet Union, a totalitarian dictator that will be mentioned throughout the course of history. But back in the early 1920s, when he was yet to seize power, no one ever considered Stalin to become the successor of Lenin. So how did this seemingly average man surpass the fierce competition and become the totalitarian dictator of the Soviet Union? Stalin exploited this state machinery and used war power to obtain a higher position. Then through the turning point of Lenin's death, he manipulated alliances and used coercive power to get rid of his rivals to achieve absolute power. Before Stalin seized absolute power over the nation, he only was an ordinary member of the Bolshevik party. Through the courses of revolutions that swept across Russia, starting from 1917, Tsar's regime was replaced by a Bolshevik party, who implanted a one-party dictatorship by the leadership of Lenin. Soviet Union as a one-party state was a crucial condition for Stalin's rise to power, as Stalin, unlike other totalitarian dictators such as Hitler, did not have to lead a party himself, but had to climb up the party ladder to get power. This strategic rise to power suited Stalin, as while he may have lacked certain charismatic skills, his political trickery surpassed any of his rivals. Yet this was a seemingly impossible task, as between Stalin and his coveted power stood many rivals. There was Leon Trotsky, the leader of the Red Army and a hero of the Russian Revolution, as well as Lev Kamenev, Grigory Zinoviev, and Nikolai Bukharin, who all were seen as more capable than Stalin in the beginning. For Stalin to survive in the bloodshed for power, he needed a basis of power for himself, and thus a better position in the party. A crucial condition that allowed this was Stalin's appointment as the general secretary of the Bolshevik party. This was possible as weakened Lenin needed a man to take care of his duties and the others looked down upon this role. Yet this position was what allowed Stalin to effectively use reward power for his own benefits. Being a general secretary, Stalin was able to effectively use reward power of assigning people of position of the party. These newly appointed delegates, later known as Stalinist delegates, would pledge their loyalty of Stalin as Stalin was the one who gave them a seat in the party. If he could appoint, he could also expel. Stalin expelled party members that disagreed with his use, which eroded Trotsky's support base. As these usage of reward power came into effect, majority of votes in the party were cast in favor of Stalin, which became a huge advantage in committee sessions later on. A big turning point as it was the condition that allowed Stalin's rise to power was Lenin's death. From the end of the Bolshevik Revolution, Lenin was in absolute power and hence revealing any ambition was suicide. But January 21, 1924, the absolute leader of the Soviet Union was no longer present. This meant Stalin could now take actions of his ruthless plans for power. Stalin was a master of political manipulation, especially how he formed and broke alliances for his benefit, using coercive power to get rid of his rivals one by one until he was the last one standing. Just before Lenin's death, Stalin formed an alliance with Kamenev and Zinoviev against Trotsky who was the strongest out of all back then. The Triumvirate launched a campaign criticizing Trotsky's arrogance and his unrealistic vision of a permanent revolution, effectively destroying his reputation in the party. By 1926, Trotsky was voted out of the Politburo, thanks to Stalin's control over the Stalinist delegates and Trotsky's destroyed reputation. After eliminating the threat of Trotsky, Stalin immediately broke the Triumvirate alliance and allied with Bukharin against Kamenev and Zinoviev. Kamenev and Zinoviev allied with Trotsky to try to fight against Stalin, but Stalin already had more influence over the party than them, and in 1927, both were expelled from the party while Trotsky was expelled from the Soviet Union. Finally, Stalin broke the alliance he had with Bukharin and managed to vote him out of the Politburo by 1929. These examples of removing his rivals from the party was Stalin's excellent usage of coercive power. By removing his rivals from the party, Stalin not only removed the obstacles for absolute control over the party, but also inspired fear upon all, warning what will happen if anyone stands against him. Stalin continued to use coercive power to ensure his absolute control when he executed Kamenev and Zinoviev in 1936, executed Bukharin in 1938, and ordered the assassination of Trotsky in 1940. There were other conditions that helped Stalin's rise to power. One of them was the flaws of Stalin's rivals had. 
Trotsky, although starting ahead in the race for power, was arrogant and outspoken, openly criticizing party members during meetings, which lessened the support. He also, unlike Stalin, did not pay attention to lobbying and maintaining his votes in the party, which resulted in his inevitable expulsion from the party and the nation. The others, Kamenev, Zinoviev, and Bukharin also made fatal errors in their initial decision to support Stalin, primarily as they underestimated Stalin's ambition and brilliant strategic mind. One great example of their mistake is not removing Stalin from position even having read Lenin's testament. Lenin wrote just before death, urging the party to remove Stalin from the general secretary position. But Kamenev and Zinoviev found no need of that and missed the great chance to easily remove one of their most devious contenders. Again, the conditions of a one-party system in the Soviet Union, death of Lenin, and the flaws of Stalin's rivals, grouped with Stalin's own brilliant capabilities to utilize reward and course of power, resulted in the power falling in Stalin's hands, and him being remembered as one of the most famous totalitarian dictators of history.